first week in Boston, every single thing I was eating seems to have a sweet component. It was driving me crazy. So I tried in a restaurant and I was saying, okay, maybe just the supermarket. Same thing, same thing, even the pasta sauce. I was in trouble. Hi, for those who don't know me yet, my name is Margot and I'm French. If you like cross-culture living abroad stories, this channel is for you. So please subscribe, hit the bell button and enjoy the video. Eight years ago, I decided to study abroad in Boston and then to come back to France with my American experience in my luggage. But I didn't. And after a certain number of non-permanent working visas, I'm now a proud and a happy permanent resident working and living in New York City. This is a little bit of a story of a mismatch because not only I can testify that American food contains way more sugar than the French one, I'm also a savory person from the start, from childhood. When I was a child, I was a kind of mystery for my parents or adults around me because I preferred always the savory side of what was offered. For instance, I was not onto cake and it was making adults around me freaking out. I was not onto candies, same deal, same problem. And guess what? I was requesting blue cheese and spinach. I'm not certain where it comes from, but what I can say is that I cannot get over two spoons of dessert without having a bitter taste in my mouth. I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe there are some enzymes that are missing in my body. Who knows? You will certainly react saying to me, oh, Margot, good for you. You're a savory person. Well, it was already a little bit problematic in Europe. So I'd like to guess that in America, it was a nightmare from the start because there is sugar in every type of food in America. My critique will get a step further. The real culprit is not only sugar, but corn syrup that is way more present in the American food than the French one or European one. So if I would have only one suggestion to do is to cut down totally corn syrup and to stick to non-refined sugar naturally present in fruits, for instance. There are many tricks on the internet on cutting down refined sugar and there are channels that are absolutely wonderful driven by nutritionists as Pick Up Lime that I would I highly recommend because I'm not a nutritionist. So I'm not going to give you, you know, recipe or whatsoever. My two tips that are very, my go-tos, I would say, when I want a dessert or when it's time for dessert, I'm going to sweeten a yogurt with a fruit that I'm going to cook, like cooked apple or cooked pear or dried fruit on top whatsoever. And what does absolutely work for me is also to sparkle a little bit of cinnamon that is always going to add some sugary component without any sugar. Maybe your savory recipe will taste a little bit on the sour side at first, and maybe your dessert are going to be very light on sugar, but I'm very optimistic you will have a huge and very quick impact on your energy level. And bonus wise, you are going to be prepared to visit friends. Why I'm sharing that with you is that my foreign experience brought me to the conclusion that all this hidden sugar had a very terrible impact on my energy level. So if you are concerned by it, or if you would like to improve it, I think it would be a very good start. I really hope sharing my story about sugar in America will give you a little bit of perspective or some ideas or help in any way. I was so surprised how easy and quick it was for me to get my energy back and to cut most of the refined sugar. I'm sure you can do it. If you like this video, please give a thumb up, subscribe and hit the bell button. If you have other easy tips to cut down sugar, please share your experience in the comment section below. Next episode, I will share my food routine as a performer in New York City. Could be maybe inspirational for any kind of very busy schedule. Stay tuned, à bientôt, ciao!